Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. My name is Evan Schneider, and today I wanna to talk about my process of color grading using the Lumetri color panel in Premiere Pro. Now, if you've been around here for a while, you would know that I do most of my color grading in DaVinci Resolve. However, there are some circumstances where I use the tools in Premiere Pro. Now, you don't have all of the flexibility of the node-based workflow of DaVinci Resolve. However, the tools have been streamlined in Premiere Pro to kind of form a mix between the tools you would see in Lightroom and the tools you would see in DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut. If you're only in Premiere Pro, I think you can still achieve great results. So with that, let's get into it. All right, so we're here in Premiere Pro and I have a few clips loaded up. So usually I would wait until the end of the edit to do the color grade, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna use these four clips. Now, before we get into going through the Lumetri color panel, I wanna kind of show you guys how I set up my timeline for color grading. Now, there's a couple ways to do it. You can obviously just put the Lumetri effect on each individual clip, or you can click on the color tab and use the Lumetri color panel. However, I like to do kind of a two-step process where I actually create a new adjustment layer and then I drag it on top of all of the footage that I'm going to be color grading. If you have any clips that are shot on different cameras or um, you have like titles or graphics or anything, you can simply just cut the adjustment layer and then delete it for that section. Say that that's like a title or something and you don't want the color grade to be on top of that clip. This is really useful if you have your entire timeline as one camera because then anything you do in the Lumetri color tab on this adjustment layer will be applied to all of the clips underneath. Then you'll see that you can actually do small adjustments on each individual clip underneath the adjustment layer if you need to do some further tweaking, say like white balance or exposure. Since this timeline has multiple different types of footage in it, um, I'm just gonna go through individually, but I just wanted to show you guys how I do that because that's kind of the fastest way to set it up. The other thing is that when you're in the color tab, when you select the clip, it'll automatically select the Lumetri color panel. And you'll see over here on the effect controls that there's no Lumetri color, but once I make any sort of adjustment on here, like say I increase the temperature to 10, you'll see that it automatically adds the Lumetri color effect to this clip. The other thing I like to do is to keep the source video track selected and then make sure my sequence selection follows playhead is on because that way I can simply just use the arrow keys up and down to go from clip to clip and it automatically selects those clips as I'm adjusting them so that I have no chance of adjusting the wrong clip and possibly messing up the color grade. So overall, that's kind of how I set it up. But since we're just kind of color grading clip by clip, I'm actually going to delete the adjustment layer and we're just gonna do each individual clip separately. I'm just gonna run through all of the different settings in Lumetri Color and kind of how they work. So you've got basic correction, creative, curves, color wheels and match, HSL secondary, and vignette. And so the way that they're organized is actually the order that they're processed within the image. So it's gonna process the basic correction first and then creative curves. So basically anything you do upstream here is gonna affect everything downstream. So first off the bat in the basic correction tab, this is kind of where I live most often. The input LUT selection is mostly for a technical conversion. So if you're shooting in log, say DJI D-Log M, which is what this footage was shot on, you can use a technical LUT to convert that D-Log footage to Rec. 709. I'm not gonna go completely in depth about how to color grade log footage because I've actually made another video about that. So I'm gonna link that above if you wanna give that a watch. One thing to note is that technically, in the color grading pipeline, I would actually have my log to Rec. 709 conversion LUT at the end of the pipeline, and I would do all of my basic corrections and primaries before the log conversion LUT. So then you've got your automatic white balance selector, which you can pick and choose something in your shot. If it's white, um, like say this wall, I can select it and it'll automatically adjust the white balance to make that white. 
which in this case, there's nothing really pure white, so I wouldn't actually do that. If you film a white card while you're shooting, you can use that and it works pretty well. Then underneath you have your manual adjustments for temperature, so warmer and cooler. If you double click on any of them, you can reset it to zero. Um, tint from magenta to green. Um, I kind of play with these. I don't usually push them too far because it can start feeling a little unnatural. The more you push it, the less natural it's gonna feel. Before you start adjusting the color, you definitely want to pull up your Lumetri scopes. You can kind of tell what's going on in the image just by looking at the viewer, but these Lumetri scopes will actually show you exactly what's happening. They are so useful and I can't color grade without them. Learn how to use scopes and your grades will become even better. So now that we have our scopes pulled up, I can kind of show you what all of these tone tools do. Um, exposure is basically going to push the image kind of on a slightly linear scale up and down. By the way, all of these tools I use very carefully. Contrast adds a kind of linear contrast to your footage. You wanna be careful with this because if you push it too far, you could start clipping your highlights and shadows a little too much. So if you wanted to add contrast to your footage, I would actually recommend using the highlights and shadows and whites and blacks sliders. These have a lot nicer roll off in the highlights and shadows. And so as you can see, when I push it up, it's kind of compressing those highlights instead of when I push the contrast, it's just kind of pushing it really way too far. And then the whites and blacks just show the white point and the black point. The goal is to keep it within this range. That's where your best color is going to be. And then finally you have your saturation control to increase or decrease saturation over the entire image. Next you have your creative tab. This is where if you are using some sort of look, um, some sort of creative let to kind of add a creative style to your footage, you can apply it here. I actually have developed uh, multiple LUT packs that I sell on my website called LUTCO. These LUTs are really useful for just getting a one step style to your footage and you can kind of play around with them and see which one works best on whichever shot you're using. So on this shot, let's try, I'm just gonna do Fairmont one. You can also adjust the intensity of your creative let. So usually I'll apply it and then I'll kind of back it off and then kind of bring it forward until it gets to a good point where it's looking natural, but not too contrasty. Um, the adjustments, I the only one I really use is sharpen. Um, faded film is a little bit gimmicky. It basically just like brings up the black point and brings down the white point to give you that creamy look that was really popular in like the early 2000s. So basically don't touch that one. Um, sharpen tool is pretty good. Just be careful with it. Um, I don't like to go past like 30. Vibrance is kind of like saturation. It saturates the more saturated colors more than the less, less saturated colors or it desaturates the less saturated colors and desaturates more the more saturated colors. So it's not a linear adjustment, it's kind of based on how much saturation is already there. And the shadows and highlights tint, a lot of times shadows are pushed a little bit towards like blue or teal, and then highlights are pushed kind of warmer, but there's a lot of different creative styles that you can use using these two tools. Next tab we have is curves. This is kind of where you can create a tone for your footage. The most popular curve is called an S curve. And this kind of helps you um, add a little bit of contrast while maintaining your highlights and shadows. So I'm just gonna go here, create a bit of an S curve. Now this is definitely like an extreme example which I need to back it off a lot actually. And then a lot of times I'll kind of bring down the highlights um, to kind of soften them out a little bit. You can also kind of mess around with the other sliders to kind of mess around with the tones a little bit. Like I can cool off the shadows by bringing the red one down. Um, so we've kind of introduced a little bit more of a creative style to our footage using these. Maybe I can push a little more red up a tiny bit. These tools are kind of new in Premiere Pro, um, the hue saturation curves. I might go more into depth with these tools in other videos. These can be really powerful tools to be able to adjust specific colors in your image. So basically the first word 
is what the target color is, and the second word is basically what you're doing to it. So hue versus sat means you're taking a specific hue and changing the saturation of that hue. Um, hue versus hue, you're taking a specific color and changing it to another color. Um, hue versus luma, you're taking a certain color, changing the brightness of that color. Um, luma versus sat, you're taking certain luminance values and adjusting the saturation of them. And then sat versus sat is you're taking specific saturation values and adjusting the saturation. So you can say, take all of the higher saturated values and bring them down. So you could do something like that. But 90% of the time, I'm staying in the hue versus sat and hue versus hue curves. The way I would use this is say, I wanted to adjust a specific skin tone or the blues are looking a little bit strange and so I want to adjust just those colors. So I can just select that range and you want to make sure that you're kind of selecting a bigger range or else you might get some sort of tearing or artifacts. And then I would basically just take this middle point and push it up or down. Say I want it to be more saturated. Say I want it to be less saturated. This line in the middle kind of shows you which way to go. So if I'm going down, only the blues are getting less saturated. And if I go up, I'm pushing more saturation into just those tones. You can really get some good looking results. And this tool wasn't really introduced into Premiere Pro until I think 2020. And before that, it was really only seen in professional color grading programs like DaVinci Resolve or Scratch. Next, we have the color wheels and match. It's kind of funny. I really don't ever use these tools, honestly. These wheels have never been smooth for me and they're always laggy and I never really get the results I want. In my opinion, I would skip over these tools. I think you can achieve the results you want just by using the basic correction, um, like temperature and brightness, exposure, shadows, highlights, all of those tools. Um, your HSL secondary is another tool that I don't necessarily go to a lot, but it acts just like the qualifier in DaVinci Resolve. We don't have any skin tones in this shot, but it can be a good way to kind of um, soften out and warm up the skin tones without using the curves or anything else like that. Finally, you have your vignette, which is very useful. You can change the amount. I usually go darker. I never go brighter on the edges. Um, this kind of mimics um, the vignette that naturally happens with different lenses. So I kind of like to adjust that a little bit. Um, I kind of go extreme first, figure out where my midpoint should be, um, maybe feather it out quite a bit, adjust the roundness to be kind of hitting a little less of the sides, and then I'll back off the amount until it looks like something I like. So maybe something like that. So we have before and after. Um, obviously it works really well in this shot because we're directing all of the attention straight to these buildings in the middle. So that's the Lumetri color panel and we've kind of run through all of the different adjustments. Um, now that we have this shot color graded, you can click on the effects button to toggle the bypass on or off. So we're just gonna hit that. We can see before and that's after before and after. So we've increased the saturation and the contrast and applied a bit of a creative look to this shot. If I wanted to copy and paste this grade to the next shot, um, basically what I can do is I can either go to effect controls and I can copy the Lumetri color effect, go to this shot and paste it, or let me delete this. You can just hit copy and then do option command V to paste attributes and then make sure just the Lumetri color effect is selected and hit okay. Um, this is a great way to apply it to multiple clips. You can select multiple clips and apply it, um, whatever works for you. It really depends on what your shot is and what's in it. Um, I kind of evaluate every shot as I go and see what kind of creative look I wanna go for. It really depends on mood, it depends on feel, it depends on subject matter. Um, there's so many different variables, but once you kind of mess around with it a little bit and find a look that you like, I think you'll see that the tools in the Lumetri color panel are actually uh, really powerful and can really add a lot to your videos. 
I know that we covered a lot of stuff in this video. If I missed anything, if I can answer any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. If you're looking for creative LUTs to help you create a specific look for your footage, definitely go check out my website, LUTcompany.com for those creative LUTs. I spent a ton of time developing them to work on different cameras and different lighting situations uh, to give you a good toolbox of presets to use. Um, in your videos. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.